The Christian walk is a very, very mysterious journey. And many people are falling off this particular journey because they had nagging questions they didn't have answers to. And so when people ask us, and then they don't have answers, and so they get swayed into other directions and trajectories. Who did Cain marry, for instance? The Christian versus homosexuality. Must a Christian drink alcohol? What are your thoughts on cremation? These questions are put to rest with adequate answers from the Word of God and all other sources that put it to give you a holistic approach to these questions. And then you can make very, very informed decisions on this walk that leads to eternal life. Join me on number 5 Grace Avenue on Sunny 88.7 FM and also on Timothy Bento Ministries Facebook Live as we put your questions to rest. Join us and stay lifted. We love you. God bless you. A good life is not indicative of the presence of God. We live in a time where not everybody in your life can be substituted. Men are atmospheres and if you are able to charge your atmosphere right oh, nobody I sees you for you. May the finished work You cannot be a son or a daughter of God and for you nothing is where you have what it takes. You don't need oil, green oil, blue oil, red oil. If your life does not please God, bro, you're going to hell. Welcome to Pastor Timothy's preaching. Every time we talk about the walls of Jericho, we are thinking about the shouts that brought down the wall. Every time we talk about the walls of Jericho, we are thinking about the shouts that brought down the wall. But for every one of the six days, before the seventh day, that the shout went up. Caleb, for every one of the six days, the Bible says, and the priests, when they went around the wall, they blew the trumpets and they blew the ram horns every single day. Listen, worship is what is what set the tone and made the environment conducive for the shouts to bring down the wall because every one of the six days there was there was there was the priest with the trumpets and the priest with the horns blowing it in worship to God for every single one of those days so it goes beyond just the shout before the shout there has to be worship that is what what will take me into what is worship because if we start going to what is worship, then worship is not just a song. Worship is not just a slow song. Worship is not just kneeling down in the church when we are doing praise and worship. Worship is, tell anybody about worship is more than a song. Actually, worship is a lifestyle. The greatest way to worship God is to have a lifestyle. That makes God proud. That is worship. When I say I worship the ground my wife walks upon. When I say I worship my wife. It means that when I walk through town and there are 72,000 different very beautiful girls. Because I worship my wife. I close my eyes. That is worship. We are relying solely on God. That is what I'm talking about today. Because guess what? If we do not change the things that happened last year, we will get the same results this year. Is that true? We are relying solely on God this year. And to be able to rely on God, you need to trust God. To be able to rely on God alone, you need to what? You need to trust God. Because you can't rely on somebody you don't trust. Relying on God is a consequence that is determined by the degree of trust on God. How much do you trust God? Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not on thy, thine own understanding. In all your ways, 6, and acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. I want to look at the 5. He says, trust in the Lord with all thy. Listen, it is not about who, who your rich uncle is, like me and my brother. It's not about who your rich auntie is. Eh? This is they say rich auntie. It's my rich auntie. No. It's not about, it's not about who, 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 who told you that 
they will marry you. It's not about for the ladies, for the ladies, uh, 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 the blessing of God in life is determined by the, the, the deep pockets of the man that marries you. That is a lie from hell. I've seen men who have married women, very wealthy men, and two years after they married them, their bank account got dry. So that's not that's not a determinant of a blessing. Say Bema no be why no no we see kapa pa 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 pa. Oh sure this one I do. There was a point. Why? Because my pockets might not be very deep, but when the devil comes at you at night, I'ma deal with him. And that is what you should be looking for when you are looking. You are you, you are looking. I'm not saying look for a man that prays and doesn't work, or a man that prays and has no money. I'm saying that don't make money the standard for the man. Trust in the Lord. For you to be able to rely on God, you must trust God. You must trust God. Open your Bible. First Samuel 29 and First Samuel 30. Let me give you a background to it so we understand what happened. David had been running away from Saul for a long time. And David went to the Philistines. And the Philistine king, one of them called King Achish or Achish, no matter how you want to mention that. They, they, he took David in and then David was protected from Saul. All right? Now, the Philistines were going to war against Saul. Say Saul. The same person that was chasing David. All the Philistine kings, the five of them came together and said, we are going to war against Saul. And David was, was with them in Ziklag. They had given him a place to stay. He took all his things and said, I'm going to war with the Philistines against Saul. Because this is where my loyalties lay now. Then when they got there, in, in fact, in David's mind, that was answer to prayer. Because David couldn't have defeated the people alone. Saul and his people and everybody else who had become king after Saul had left. They, he, he couldn't defeat them alone. So for him, it was answer to prayer that God had given him five Philistine kings that were strong and had armies in the thousands, hundreds of thousands, matter of fact, to go with him against his enemy, so to speak. That was an answer to prayer. When they got there, the kings, the four kings told the one king that David was living with, they said, send this guy back. Because we are not too sure that if he goes with us into battle, he will turn against us and fight for his people just to win their favor. First Samuel 29 and 35 time and read it. Just to win their favor, Okunuya Dinya, Obed Dane, and start to fight for Israel because he's naturally an Israelite. And David said, King Achish, I've lived with you all these years. I've never been disloyal. And King Achish told him, he said, Listen, David, don't worry. Just go back and, you know, let's go and fight. Just chill, relax. Let us go and do the fighting. If I were David, at that point, I say, God has left me. Because I'm trusting these people to fight my enemies for me. But no, David went back to Ziklag. David did not know that they are turning him back from war. Was bringing him and redirecting him into a particular kind of purpose. Because when David got to Ziklag, they had raided Ziklag. Taking away his wives. Taking away everything they owned. And the place to the ground. This year, not every bad thing is bad. If you are relying on God, it means you must trust God. And if you trust God, you would understand that Romans 8.28 says all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. In this 2022, some things might look very bad, but if you understand that God is good, if you know in your heart of hearts that you love God, then you must understand that weeping may endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning. And just, and just trust God and trust the process. Because it might look like they have turned you back, but the truth of the matter is God is redirecting you to, to go and get your wives who have been taken captive and your goods and your gold and and, 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 and and the young men from Ziklag have been taken into captivity. He got there and they had taken everything that he owned. When he stood there at that point, 
I'm sure he would understand why God brought him there. At that point, he would understand. If you rely on God, you must trust God. Tell your neighbor, trust God. You see, it's easy to trust man because you can't see man. It's difficult to trust God because you can't see God. But the things we see are temporal. And the things we don't see are what? Eternal. You must come to a place. Listen, in 2022, I'm, I'll be giving keys as to what will bring us intimacy with, with God and elevation. The first one is to rely on God regardless what happens. Rely. I'm not saying that 2022 will be smooth sailing. I'm not saying it will be nice. I'm not saying everybody will love you. I'm not saying everybody will do everything you say. But I'm saying that no matter what happens, even if you are Job, you would have double for your trouble eventually. Because God is good. Somebody say, God is good. You are saying it like I'm forcing you to say. Say, God is good. God is good. Now, Nick, read 1 Samuel 17, verse 7 for me. The seventh verse of the 17th chapter of the first book of Samuel. Say that again. The staff of the spear was my deliverance. Say that again. Your version says staff. Okay, no, that's fine. Read it. Go ahead. And the staff of the spear was my deliverance. A weaver's beam, uh huh. The spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. Uh -huh. <laughs> the giant, the guy that was insulting the armies of the God of Israel, he was a giant. His name was Goliath. And it tells us the intensity of his weaponry and his defense. It says that a man went, when these guys are going to fight, they hold, they hold the shield in one hand and they hold the sword or the spear in another hand. But in the case of, of Goliath, Goliath had a man, one man holding his, only him, one man was holding his shield. And the man holding his shield was walking in front of Goliath. And Goliath was insulting and cursing the armies of the Lord God of Israel. Put your hands together for Nick. Thank you, Pastor Nick. Please, thank you. Put your hands together for him. When God showed me this, God said to me, he said, Goliath had lost the battle before David came. Ask me why. Ask me why. If Goliath stood there and cursed the God of the Israelites, if Goliath stood there and the defense of Goliath was carried by a man, oh, you don't understand. The guy's defense was carried by a man. David said, Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. The guy stood in front of them. He was cursing and insulting. He had forgotten that the person that was holding his shield was a man. When a man holds your shield, defeat is inevitable. Tell somebody that let God be your shield this year. A man was holding the guy's shield and he was, he was talking plenty. He did not know that he had already failed because when a man holds your shield when a man becomes your defense and your protection that alone is a recipe for disaster and destruction he says a man was holding his shield and the man i like the word he says the man was carrying his shield and he walked in front of him the man was holding his shield and he, he was holding the shield and he was walking in front of Goliath. <laughs> the first point of demise, the first reason for demise is the fact that a man holds your shield. And David understood that. The second reason for demise and destruction and defeat 
eventually is that David understood in fact God said to them he said I will go before you in a pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night a man carrying his shield walked before him when men walk before you you are about to fall in this year make sure that men will not go before you make sure that men will not lead you make sure that you don't take your cue from men make sure that men are the last resort make sure that god himself is what goes before you many of us are walking today and we are walking under a curse do you know why we are walking under a curse because the bible says blessed is the man that put his trust in god and if the man that puts his trust in god is blessed then the man that puts his trust in man is many of us are walking under a curse Because the arm of flesh will fail. Arm of flesh would fail. This year, you see, it's easy to say we trust God. I'm telling you. It's easy to say I what? Trust God. It's, it's very easy. But when you have a Goliath staring you in the face, when you have a Goliath staring you in the face, when you have a mountain that seems insurmountable, at that point, your trust in God is tested. When there are problems, that is why God sometimes allows the issues to come. If you are a Christian and you don't have any problems, I doubt your Christianity. If you have a, you are a Christian, everything is working, everything is moving, there are no issues in your life. Charlie, there's a problem. No, no, there's a problem. Because God Himself will test the words of your mouth. In 2022, we will rise, we will soar, we will climb, we will fly on the mountain. We will, yes, 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 yes. But all those things happen as a result after the test. Listen, this year God will test somebody. But I need you to understand. You think you are going through some things. But if you compare your notes with somebody, you notice you are blessed. You think that, yeah, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, you, you, it's okay, it's okay. You just, just ask somebody else about, listen, sometimes I complain. I am, I'm talking to God about the church, about family, about ministry, about, I'm talking to God, and then I'll hear somebody's, some, you hear somebody's request, his prayer request. And you bless God for your life. Say, God, we are God. Because you notice that God has been good to you. You, you, you see John the Baptist in the prison. John is saying, God, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, should we expect another other guy to come? John the Baptist is in the prison and he's what? This is the guy who baptized Jesus. Who? He's in the prison and he's expecting that Jesus will come and take him from there. And I'm thinking, John the B, you don't understand what is going on. If you don't get it, thank you. John, John the B doesn't understand what is going on. Listen, this is somebody who everybody said his mother could not give birth. And your mother gave birth to you. So for you, being alive alone is enough testimony to the goodness of God. Am I talking to somebody at all? Some people, just the fact that you are breathing, you must bless God. Because if you know what the devil has planned for you, if you know the things that they have written about you, and the kinds of attacks they have sent, that some angels were sent to block and to and to, and to dislodge 
and dislocate and, and bring down and render inoperable. You will begin to dance hallelujah every 12 midnight. You are, you, are, you are a joker. Stop complaining. Start praising. Because if you know, listen, I love the writer said, count your blessings. Today you are thinking that, uh, that as if you it is your right that if, if God doesn't do it, let me yeah, sorry, when you watch found back is here the peace. Because if we are counting the things you have done that deserve the anger and the fury of God. Jesus said, if you hate a man in your heart, you have murdered him. Do you know how many murderers are sitting here? It is time to begin trusting God regardless the circumstances. You are broke. Trust God. At that point, if I call you, I say, Trust God. That's a song from I did tell in the minimum, but they will say, Trust God. 11 p.m. and I Trust God for what? Trust God, trust God. When the thing stares at you in the face, you are looking for a man to help you out. Forgetting that every man is in the hands of God. The Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hand of God. And like a river, he turneth it whithersoever he pleases. So instead of looking for a man to ask for money from, look for the owner of the man to direct people to you. It's very easy to ask men. You must come to a place as a lady, as a gentleman that you can say for a fact that you see we sing if it had not been for the Lord on our side. But the truth of the matter is if it had not been for the sugar daddy on your side. The truth of the matter is if it had not been for that auntie on your side for that friend on your side. How many of us can say from the depths of our heart that if it had not been for God. No, I'm not talking about the through salary and, and you work for somebody and the things that no, I'm talking about the things that you know that this can only be God how many of us have that kind of testimony we have been conditioned so much that if you wake up and somebody asks that how do you intend to get the job you say I'm looking up to God They'll tell you you are a useless person. And I'm a boy. They'll tell you you are what? A useless person. Okay, you are looking up to God. You are what? Useless person. I'm not saying that cross your leg and sit at home. Don't write application. Don't go anywhere. Just sit at home and say God will bring you the job. No. I'm saying after you've done all that. When you come back home and you sit down, you are rest assured because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. So the guy who is the boss at that company, you no, know, or no So you decide which of them you want. After you have said all your letters, you satisfy all righteousness. Then you sit down and you cross your leg and you tell God, God, I want the the ICT one. I want the telco one. I want the oil one. I want this one. I don't want a boss that will come and sexually harass me. Whether you're a guy or a girl, even the guys, they sexually harass us too. And I I, I don't want a... a, Just say, yes. And 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 you write your things down. And then at night, you wake up. And then you put the paper down. And you begin to dance around the paper. <laughs> you begin to dance around the paper. And 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 your, your wife will ask you, say, ah, you're born pioneer, sir. Because you understand that for God to move in your life, you have to totally acknowledge him in all your ways. And you cannot say that you are going to get a new job and take God out of the equation. Because you wake up in the morning, Lord, I'm going, please go with me. And as I'm going, 
give me a good job. And as one to me, the way. in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And then you go there, and the guy you are going to meet woke up at 3, 2 a.m. And he was chanting in his room, chanting against all kinds of things, chanting and saying all kinds of things. You are not his friend the moment you walk through the door. Because there are different spirits at work. And for that to happen, for you to get that job, you must, you must, you must wield authority and, and show for the expression of the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we have. And so you the, the guy does not like you, but he sees himself take your application. He's wondering why he's doing that. He takes the application and he's going, he's telling uh, 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 confirm this person. And he puts it down, confirm this person for me. And he asks him, boss, is there a problem? I said, no, there's no problem. Why? Because you woke up at night and besought the God of heaven. You must come to a place this year that when 31st December comes, you can look back and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Let me tell you the truth. Men will always fail you. Let me tell you the truth. This flesh will always, so you stop writing uh, uh, I'm cutting people off this year because men will always fail you. If you understand that, no need to cut them off. Keep them by the table so that when God sets the table, they will see some. You don't understand? You don't understand? David understood that if God told the Israelites that he will go before them in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire, that's all he needed. That is all he needed be able to rely on God solely this year. You must trust God. But if you are trusting God, that means that you must have a track record of something that God has done. So David could stand there and say, the God that gave me the lion, the God that gave me the bear, that God will give me this uncircumcised Philistine. Believe you me, if you don't have any testimony at all, don't worry. There's something called the comfort of scriptures. The comfort of scriptures tells you that you can look at them and say that um, 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 if Hannah could have a baby, then I can have a baby. The comfort of scripture can tell you that if even David came from the wilderness to become the king that I have I, 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 I have a, I, I have a chance in life you must understand that not everything comes from your own life sometimes you must draw from somebody else's testimony if Timothy Bentum could stop drug addiction if Timothy Bentum can stand in front of people and lead them in prayer and bring them to Jesus then what is stopping me who was addicted to this addicted to that doing this doing that also do it. So if you don't have your own testimony, it's okay for free. Take my testimony and use my testimony as a base, as a track record that God, if you could do it for Timothy Bentum, I stand here today. Come down in the might of the oneness. Oh my, come on somebody and let God fight for somebody. Let God fight for you because you remember that the God that did it for Timothy can do it for me. I pray for you what it? The vampire mouth that whatever you are going through may you remember that there is a God that does things for his people that there are promises in the word of God for his people that never fail thanks for listening the Christian walk is a very very mysterious journey and many people have fallen off this particular journey because they had nagging questions they didn't have answers to and so when people ask us and then they don't have answers and so they get swayed into other directions and trajectories. Who did Cain marry, for instance? The Christian versus homosexuality. Must a Christian drink alcohol? What are your thoughts on cremation? These questions are put to rest with the adequate answers from the Word of God and all other sources that put it to give you a holistic approach to these questions. And then you can make very, very informed decisions on this walk that leads to eternal life. Join me on number five Grace Avenue on Sunny 88.7 FM and also on Timothy Bento Ministries Facebook Live as we put your questions to rest. Join us and stay lifted. We love you. God bless you. The Christian walk is a very, very mysterious journey and many people have fallen off this particular journey because they had nagging questions they didn't have answers to. 
And so when people ask us, and then they don't have answers, and so they get swayed into other directions and trajectories. Who did Cain marry, for instance? The Christian versus homosexuality. Must a Christian drink alcohol? What are your thoughts on cremation? These questions are put to rest with adequate answers from the Word of God and all other sources that put it to give you a holistic approach to these questions. And then you can make very, very informed decisions on this walk that leads to eternal life. Join me on number 5 Grace Avenue on Sunny 88.7 FM and also on Timothy Bento Ministries Facebook Live as we put your questions to rest. Join us and stay lifted. We love you. God bless you.